in the Pokemon universe, there are Pokemon. No dip, I know, but each Pokemon is a set species. Excluding form-changing exceptions, the species don't change form or type. However, some Pokemon, specifically Ursaluna and Floette, can have one-off unique forms, being Blood Moon Ursaluna and AZ Floette, respectively. You could say that those are... mutant versions. Hey guys, Jodem Reels back with another video, and today I will be going over my submissions for the LT's Mutant Menagerie. For those of you who don't know, Mutant Menagerie is a contest put on by my by a friend and a fellow Poketuber, Lava Tyrant, who will be linked in the description. The concept is to make a mutant form, as Lava put it, for an existing Pokemon in the same vein that Blood Moon Ursaluna and AZ Floette are to normal Ursaluna and Floette. The new mutants can be based on anything and function similar to regional forms, but can be the same type as the original, and only one of these mutants exists in each universe or playthrough. More information can be attained on Lava's announcement video regarding Mutant Menagerie. But let's get into my video. So the first mutant we will go over is based on the first boss in its respective game, Terraria. I have been playing a lot of Terraria recently, and I had an idea. A Gumi mutant based on King Slime. I made a sketch and was ready for the digital art version. When I learned that the Pokemon being turned into a mutant had to have a pre-evolution, aka they had to be second or third evolution in their line. So I had to scrap this design, along with another one that we'll get, that we'll get to later, and started thinking about what I could do with this concept because I liked it too much just to drop it. I tried thinking of different slime Pokemon, like Muck, Ditto, and others, but there was only one I felt like was good enough. Swalot. I am a fan of Swalot, and I feel like it's underappreciated for how silly it's shaped and how silly it is in general. So I made it into a King Slime, as if this mutant is the king of Swalots and its pre-evolutions in its area. I looked at the interior of Swalot's mouth and made some changes to add a little detail in its mouth. In Terraria, the King Slime has a ninja suspended inside of it, which is how you get the ninja armor set. So I made the Swalot's uvula have a little ninja-inspired pattern slash design to reference that ninja. I took the yellow mustache from a normal Swalot and multiplied it, turning it into a crown. I colored the colors of the shiny Queen Slime colors, because Queen Slime is the hard mode equivalent of King Slime. Here is King Slime Swalot, a poison type. It is said that a Swalot once consumed an unknown Pokemon that resembled a ninja, which had strange effects on the Swalot. It got over twice as large as it was before, and it started to turn blue. The Swalot also started to demand and lead other Swalots, like a king. Overall, I'm really happy with how this design turned out, and I think that I did both Swalot and Terraria justice with this design. The next design exists for the same reason that the last one does. If the original design followed the contest rules, then this line in the script wouldn't exist. But first, let me spin you a yarn, set all the way back in 2022. On July 24th, 2022, I uploaded a joke evolution for Smoliv on Instagram named Smolotov, where it looks like Smoliv, but the olive on its head looks like a bottle covered in fire. I made that as a joke all those years back, but I still love that design, so it's been sitting in my brain ever since. And when I was thinking of ideas for this video, I remembered that and made a sketch. Unfortunately, I learned that the mutants needed a pre-evolution, so I was thinking. Then I remembered, I could just make it a Dolliv. I made the Dolliv's Molotov bottles on his head slightly resemble pigtails, because I wanted to give this Dolliv form the... Uh, what's the word? Harley Quinn energy, for lack of better words. 
I did find a way to sneak in my scrap small of design by having Dolov carry it, about to throw the small of the same way one would throw an actual Molotov. I put flames around the eyes to mimic eye shadow, though this is a play on words because the, it's light instead of shadow. Get it? I'm so, I'm, I'm so funny. Okay. Um, I shortened the dress because it, I feel like it adds to the vibe I'm going for. The shiny, I made the flames a nice blue and violet, and made the bottles on its head root beer colored because root beer is my favorite kind of soda. Here is Bomb Bottle Dolliv, a grass and fire type. This Dolliv carries around a unique Smoliv that can explode itself into a mass of flames upon impact. The bottles on Dolliv's head can do the same, but those ones aren't sentient. While only one of these Dolliv have ever been found, scientists are baffled by a pre-evolution existing within its grass, leading some scientists to theorize that there may be more than one. All in all, I love this design, and I might even use this in, in Capelago later. The last one, or should I say the last three, are based on one of my favorite pieces of media at the moment. Yep, you probably guessed it. It's the funny pirate manga that wants us to overthrow the government, One Piece. When the Mutant Menagerie started, one of the first ideas I had was a mutant Hitmonlee based on Blackleg Sanji. I made it fire type not only because Diablo Jambe, but also for other reasons. Firstly, I can make its legs out of coal to make the legs black like Sanji's epithet. Secondly, I can make the hair out of fire for Sanji's iconic hair over one eye, and like and its yellow color. I made it shiny based on the Onigashima raid outfit for Sanji with blue flames. After I posted the sketch for Blackleg Hitmonlee on a server on Discord as a teaser, somebody asked if I will do the other Hitmons, so I decided yes. So I made a Mutant Hitmon chain and a Mutant Hitmon top based on Zoro and Luffy respectively to complete the monster trio. Let's start with the Hitmon chain form. I made it grass type for multiple reasons, just like the Hitmonlee form. Firstly, it plays into Zoro's nickname of Mosshead by turning it into a literal head of moss. Second, Zoro is well known for his sword skills, so I can pull in Adventure Time and use the joke of a blade of grass. I also made the hilt of the sword in his mouth to be the scar on Zoro's eye, and the diagonal line on its torso to be the scar from the fight with Mihawk at the Baratier. I based its shiny on Mihawk, his mentor and the greatest swordsman. The last one here is Hitmon Top, based on Monkey D. Luffy himself. I was basing it specifically on his Gear 5 form, especially since I got up, I got caught up to current shortly before I'm making this. I made the top part of its head the iconic straw hat, and I gave it the big Luffy smile. On the paper sketch, I gave it the normal Hitmon Top eyes, which looked weird, so I gave it closed looking eyes in the digital render. I added a stylized version of Luffy's eye scar and made the Hitmon Top outfit, which already kind of resembles a simplified version of Luffy's outfit, the Gear 5 colors of white and purple. I stretch out the leg that was kicking to show that this Hitmon Lee has the rubber-like powers of Luffy and the Gum Gum Fruit. I added the cloud scarf that Awakened Zone users have. I made the tail purple to reference the scarf slash belt that Luffy has in Gear 5, and I added swirls all around not only to add to the cloud scarf, but also to reference Devil Fruits in general because this is the only one based on a Devil Fruit user. I made the shiny colors closer to base Luffy clothes. Oh my god, I have almost a full page of just this time lapse's voiceover. Here is Black Leg Hitmonlee a fighting and fire type. This Hitmonlee is said to have legs of coal, able to ignite them at will. Stories have been told about this Hitmonlee as a Tyrogue being tortured and imprisoned by the Pokemon of its home, escaping to sea, and surviving with little to no food on an island with an old pantsier chef. 
I love how this turned out, and I think I turned the left-hand man of the Straw Hats into a good mutant Pokemon. Now let's get to the right-hand man. Here is Pirate Hunter Hitmonchan, a fighting and grass type. It is said that this Pokemon is known around the world for hunting both people and Pokemon using its three blades, which are made solely from vegetation, which is why this Hitmonchan is sometimes referred to as the King of Distortion, alongside Giratina. It travels around the world to complete its goal of becoming the strongest blade using Pokemon. Overall, this is the least favorite of the three, but I still think it's a good design. Now, let's move over to their captain, and the next Warrior of Liberation. Here is Gum Gum Hitmontop, a fighting and fairy type. This Hitmontop is said to have the properties of rubber and is the most recent incarnation of Nika, the sun god of liberation. Its heartbeat is said to sound like drums that play before the dawn breaks. While it is seen as a criminal in most foreign regions for committing piracy, all it wants is to be free to go wherever and do whatever whenever it wants to. It wants complete freedom. All in all, I love this design, and I feel like I captured Gear 5 Luffy's goofy, silly energy. And there you have it, my entry to Lava Tyrant's Mutant Menagerie. What do you guys think of the design? Tell me down in the comments. If I remember to, I will link top Lava Tyrant's video in the description, if any of you want to participate for yourself. As for my own Fakemon videos, the next couple of ones are planned to be more generic Fakemon, maybe a box legendary teaser, and hopefully the starters for Capelago. So I hope you guys enjoyed, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the future.